What is the crack, YouTubers? Welcome to another episode of Two Bald Knobs. As always, it's myself, Scarnier, and... Myself, Six Plus Steve-O. How are you doing, guys? Well, I'm not too bad, Steve-O. How are you? What's the crack, bud? What are you up to these days? I am absolutely shattered, mate, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> I have been uh, working my ass off lately, uh, both at my regular job that pays the bills and my secondary job of running a YouTube channel during the month of October. It's been a uh, heavy schedule I've put on myself, a uh, heavy workload. I've basically been releasing a video a day and uh, it's taken its toll, but it's um, the channel's seen some fantastic growth as I suspected it would, but I think it's, uh, it's exceeded my expectations and uh yeah it's just been really good so i've just basically been plowing all of my free time into creating videos covering the latest news and just uh yeah doing what we do best and chatting bollocks about orcs every evening well, well yeah we do that anyway it's like oh we'll just point the camera at it and away which yeah. fair play to you man you're a mad <laughs> you're a mad bastard i wouldn't be up for that there one every day i'd lose my sanity quickly Oh yeah, it's, I mean it's not gonna, it's not. I'm not gonna be able to maintain this uh, workload after October. That's for sure. Um, my regular sort of routine is a couple of videos a week, maybe three on a on a good week, one on a bad week. But uh, yeah, this one video a day is um, yeah, it's it's brutal. Uh, if, if I didn't work, then I'd happily do that. But uh, unfortunately, I do have a full time job as well, and uh, so yes, yeah, it's. it's so that's what I've been doing on the channel. Um, Hobby-wise, I've, I've been building Mega Knobs, and uh, that's been great fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I saw your, your video about the Mega Knobs. It's a solid kit, I have to say. A, a vast improvement over the metal Mega Knobs that we used to have going back. Yeah, I, I love the kit. I know I've, I've bitched and moaned about the price, and I still stand by that. I still think they're absurdly expensive. Um, but having said that, for me personally, I'd say it's my favourite orc kit I've ever built. I absolutely love it. There's the options in there, the 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 design of the stuff. It's it's one of the most modern orc kits that we currently have as well. So it's just a pleasure to build. It's easy. There's barely any mould lines and stuff on it. The the way the kit goes together and the the options to build a big mech or guys with kill saws and the different combi shooters and Unlike most kits where you get like one or two of the options and you maybe can't kit the whole squad out as you'd want, this comes with all of it. If you want all of them with combi rockets or combi scorchers or kill swords, you can have that. And yeah, you've got loads of bits left over. And it's just an awesome kit. I absolutely love it. And I would definitely be getting another one because uh, three Mega Knobs just is not enough. No, three Mega Knobs is, is never enough. I have to agree with you about, about that kit, though. It is it is pretty good. Uh, especially, like, how there's, like, the peg and sockets for their hands. So if you were that way in coins, yeah. you could actually change them out. But, like, yeah, it's a bit fiddly for me. But, um, yeah, th yeah, that is a, it's, it's a vast improvement on some of the older kits that we still have going. And some of the newer kits that will be coming out on the pipeline, like these buggies and such, they look uh, pretty interesting. What's this this new buggy called? This new mouthful of words that needs to be trademarked? Was it a, a, a rucker truck something or other? The, uh, yeah, the rucker truck squig buggy. It's it's I, interesting, uh, yeah. to say the least. Come on, yeah, tell me, tell me what you think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a um, yeah, it's 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 a squid bucky. It's uh, it's a big sort of four by four looking truck jeep type thing. Um, it's covered in rams and saw blades and spikes and scythes. It's got a crew of crazy looking orcs on there with um squig launchers and a guy on the back just sort of <laughs> grabbing random squigs out of a basket and hurling them um and it's filled from the description on the warhammer community so it seems to be saying about it being filled with sort of a uh, bomb squigs and i can't even remember them all now but a whole host of different types of squigs and i think some squigs we've not sort of heard or seen of since sort of some older editions um which is cool and uh yeah it's just a i have no idea what the capabilities of this thing are in game terms what it does um but 
it looks incredible. I, 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 would, I don't know. Is it my new favourite? I, oh, there's just uh, it's getting harder and harder to choose my favourite out of all these vehicles. But it's definitely a contender. It looks really cool. What do you think about it? Well, I think it's an interesting concept. It's something that they haven't really gone for uh, previously. We haven't really seen, like you said, much happen with Squigs since back in sort of Rogue Trader and Second Edition, where you would see um, Squig catapults. So you, you catapult Squigs uh, that were supposed right, to be yeah. in, like yeah, they're supposed to be in clay jars. So you'd like catapult the Squigs, the jars would break open, and the angry buzzer Squigs would go around. But yeah, like you were saying about Squigs, there was a lot more um, written about the lore about the Squigs, the different types of Squigs. I think the best one for it was Warg the Orcs, which is really old school. It goes through like a whole list of squigs. I think it's yes, and you hit the nail on the head there with buzzer squigs because that is one type that is equipped on this new squig buggy, um, the buzzer squigs. So well done there. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 a cool looking truck, man. And the, it's just a it's just a <laughs> it's bringing a lot of the comedy element back into orcs and a lot of the crazy and uh that's a, that's a big thumbs up that's it's just uh that they, they've they're really embracing that sort of comical crazy element of the orcs which i know a lot of veteran orc players um have missed over the previous years and feel like a lot of that sort of flavor has been lost over the years and through the additions so it's just really cool to see yeah, it it really it really does depend, I suppose. If you look back, I think it that that losing of that zaniness, that sort of quirky character, there used to be a lot more comical orcs, um, up until second edition, and I think it was the change, the massive change over the third edition, where they lost a lot of that um that that comical that space clown sort of comicalness. Well, not one hundred percent space clown, but orcs used to have a laugh a bit more than than they they have done over the previous years where it became more of a sort of a serious killing machine you know what i mean more more sort of robotical in their mentality whereas yeah as they say uh... they're, they're going back to that sort of zany crazy route we saw iterations of a comeback in fourth edition with the likes of the shock attack on being in, reintroduced and mm -hmm. randomness as an element so yeah, yeah it'll be i'll be interested to see the rules for it definitely yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a difficult balance to get right, that, isn't it, with these sort of, uh, you, you want them to be comical, you want them to be zany and wacky and, you know, have this sort of, bring the sort of the light-hearted aspect to 40k, because it's the grim dark, and orcs do lighten that up and bring in a comedy and stuff, but at the same time, you don't want to veer too far in that direction and lose the threatening nature of orcs, because these are like big muscle-bound, war-like, you know, they will tear your face off and stamp your teeth in. And so you, you, you still want to keep that, you know, they are a serious threat. They are, you know, very dangerous, um, especially in large numbers and things. And so you do, it's, it's a, it's a fine line to cross, but, uh, I think the direction they seem to be going, um, it seems like they're, they're hitting the nail on the head. And, uh, so yeah, hats off to them on that. It looks like, uh, I'm still hopeful that we're going to get the Orc Codex that um, we've all been holding out for for quite a few years now. Or any Orc Codex at this stage would be... No. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll kick that hornet's nest a bit. It's like, oh, stop whining. No, no. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of... Um... There's a lot of mixed feelings out there in the community right now, isn't there? There's uh, some, uh... yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's interesting to say the least at the moment. We obviously we have people who are understandably frustrated. You know, we had October sort of hyped up, and this leads on to another thing I wanted to touch on, which was leaks. So for those of you who aren't in the know, and I don't know how you wouldn't be in the know because you're listening to an Orc podcast, so I would assume you know what's going on. But we'll just do a quick recap. So basically, Games Workshop sort of hy hyped up. Yeah, we'd say hyped up. Um, hyped up October. So the men the, now correct me if I'm wrong here, but the mentality I was I was expecting would be like October. It's gonna be orcs on the white dwarf. You know what I mean? It's gonna be chock full of orky stuff. It's gonna be absolutely bedlam. We're gonna see speed freaks probably maybe all right maybe this stuff coming out in the first week was an unrealistic expectation but 
I would have at least expected to have something in my hand at this moment in time that is either a cool new vehicle or even like if it was staggered the Speed Freak box set and then maybe they release another couple of vehicles in the third week and then we get the Codex in the fourth week or, or something like that. So you'll you'll stagger your expenditure and, you know, spending your precious few teeth over the duration of the month. But it hasn't worked out like that at all. We got a lot of information about Speed Freaks and such uh, a good few weeks ago back then. And I think the problem that Games Workshop probably had was initially when we got information about a lot of the York releases and specifically Speed Freaks the box set, there was an image leak. Someone, if you if you guys know, if you look back, someone leaked um, really crappy uh, blurry photo images of the contents of the Speed Freak box set. Just the sprues and stuff like that. And I think what happened is Games Workshop then rolled with the blows. So it sort of forced their hand. So what I what I think we're seeing now at the moment in regards to October is a lot of the stuff that would have been the tidbits of information and that build up would have been built up into the, the course and the duration of time that we're in now where we're starting to see a bit of a vacuum of that. That all got pulled forward. That hype got built up and it's a, now a longer prolonged should i say duration of time that born out and i think that's what's building the frustration for people people are going online then and obviously voicing their frustration and we're then seeing sort of i don't know it's it's sort of turning turning on itself and in some cases it can get a bit nasty where people are like you know what quit your whining and it's like stop whining about whiners i thought it was why not we or whatever or, or, or not was <laughs> and they're crying you know it's yeah people are just frustrated you know yourself i'm just i'm 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 waiting until i have a codex in my hand and then i'll be like hmm well we'll see how it goes i'm interested to see the rules for all these new vehicles that we're that we're gonna have how that speed freaks yeah. box set is gonna play what about yourself yeah definitely like like you say um I, I, once we've got that codex in our hands i i think all will be forgiven and it's important to remember actually that um and i've been one of the people that has been voicing um throughout some of my videos you know look where's the news you know give us some pre-orders give us some release dates give us some new announcements give us something anything um but it is important to remember that we've had an announcement of what is it six new orc vehicles now um I'm not going to try and do the tongue twister of trying to list them all because <laughs> um, they're, they're quite a mouthful. Um, but there is the, there was the, the two that were announced in the Speed Freak set. Then there was the third one. Then there was the War Trike. Then there was the jet engined one. And now we've got the Squig Buggy. So, yeah, six. You know, a, a few months ago, we were asking for one vehicle to replace the buggy. And we they went above and beyond on that and and so yeah i mean <laughs> and we've got a new game coming out which you know is a little bonus that i don't think a lot of us were expecting if you asked us a few months ago um the codex coming um and so yeah there, there is information there there is good stuff and um new new kits that look incredible um but yeah like you say there there has been a lot of saltiness um but I, I do understand the saltiness and the impatience um, because we have been patient for an incredibly long time now. Um, and it, it, it's just been a little bit of a letdown thus far with October. We're now on, what we, the 11th today. And there hasn't really been a whole lot of anything, really. And um, we're all desperate to give GW our money and empty our wallets and just buy anything that's orc related that they release. <laughs> And it's just it's it's a bit disappointing, and uh, but I I think it's a temporary. I think it's temporary. I do still believe they have more to unveil. Um, I think they've got all the sort of buggy type vehicles sort of announced now, and speed freaks now. So um, I do think there is something else. I don't know what, but I, I I firmly believe that we've got more new releases, whether that be updates to old kits or some brand new stuff completely. I don't know, but uh, I, I, I'm still hopeful and optimistic that October will come through in the end and uh, bring us some more good stuff and get us really hyped up about it. And uh, But yeah, like you say, the community has been a bit divided. Like I say, a lot of people sort of uh, 
responding to our impatience on forums and Facebook groups and stuff, you know, telling us that we need to chill out, we need to give Games Workshop a break, and we need to stop, you know, whining and moaning and whine like babies and stuff. But I've just, just before, sorry, but just before we came on to do this podcast, I was reading through one of the Facebook groups, and one of my subscribers, I won't name him because I haven't asked his permission, but I just want to read out a post that he's put on one of the forums now, and I just think it's he, he's hit the nail on the head. And it reads, quick PSA, people aren't annoyed because their toys are late. They're not annoyed because the buggies are the only new models. They're not even annoyed because of a focus on Kill Team and Shade Spire at the moment. The reason some members of the Orc community are annoyed is because GW aren't doing what they claimed they'd do. And he quotes here, to celebrate the return of everyone's favourite green-skinned, warmongering, barbaric Xenos this October, we've got an entire month's worth of exciting content for you to help get you in the mood for war. October is going to be awesome, so don't forget to check back each day to see what news and articles we have for you. Watch out for more Orc vehicles and more rules previews as October approaches Nova Open. He then goes on to say, this simply hasn't happened. And it's all from GW's marketing team. Perhaps if they didn't mislead consumers, people wouldn't be upset. Stop straw manning, trolling, and blaming in a community that is in no way at fault. If you want to direct your ire anywhere, throw it at the company that misled its consumers. And uh, boom, I just have to say he's hit the nail on the head there. Um, we, we do sort of feel that we were... He says lied to, but I mean, we have been led up the garden path a little bit, and it has been a bit of a, a damp squib so far. But uh, I think yeah, that touches I on, on that point I made earlier, on. where I, I, I didn't expect us to have the the gap between the Speed Freak announcement and October that we're getting now. Imagine they didn't give us any information over Speed Freaks. This is just my theory on it. Imagine that they didn't show us Speed Freaks, that they didn't show us the Custom Booster Blaster, or, you know, whatever, the Teleport, you know, whatever trademark name they put on whatever new Orc vehicle. Imagine they didn't show us that stuff until this month, because I honestly think their their hands were forced. Uh, how they've handled it, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't agree w with them, to be honest with you, because your subscriber there, he, he does have a fair point, but I'm trying... I'm trying to see the logic behind it, and it, it doesn't really make sense that you'd announce something so far in advance, let there be sort of a void as such, or little tidbits off of the Warhammer community talking about... Yeah, so you, you think, like, the, like you say, you think the leaks have forced their hand too early, and then it's left them sort of the nothing yeah. to to show in during October. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And it's, there's probably a lot of truth in that, to be fair, because I doubt they would have announced it as soon as they did had it not been for the leaks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're probably, you know, bang on there, to be honest. I'm, I'm just but, uh, trying to portray that image. Like, imagine if Speed Freak's box set was announced coming into the month of October, and then we were getting all of the vehicles that we've previously already known about before October coming in now, you know what I mean? Like, we would have been biting at the absolute champ coming up to October, and I think people would have been disappointed with the White Dwarf. We're not seeing anything really in the White Dwarf. Um, there was a really cool Grot Army. Yeah, that, 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 that is... That, you, that, that's where they've got no real excuse, because White Dwarf, um, they, they, that's the time, that issue, October issue in October, that is literally, you know, leaks or not, that's when they should have been having oh, yeah, the they issue sort of They should have hammered it, home, it. I, I reckon, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the next issue will be, but uh, they'll be celebrating October in November's issue of White Dwarf, which is just a bit strange. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't really have any excuses there, but um, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's it's a shame that it's all kind of uh, it's the internet and stuff, and it? it's the internet, it's forums, it's Facebook groups. Um, we we as a community do like to focus on the negatives quite a lot, don't we? And uh, I'm as guilty of it as as anyone else sometimes. Oh yeah, definitely. Like the fact that they showed 22 mil bases on standard orc boys has <laughs> set off an absolute torrent. 
Oh, shit me, man. Now you oh, are yeah. stuck in shaking the hornet's nest. I know oh, you've been shaking yeah. that nest for a while. Um, I, I we... may have made a video on it. I may have misquoted. So currently, we, orcs... We, we... <laughs> We didn't talk at the beginning of the video. I, I went on about what I've been up to with my channel and my hobby yep. lately. We didn't talk about what you've been up to. Well, um, I've been I've been going over <laughs> to my channel and pouring a shitload of petrol on it and just sort of slowly setting it on fire. And, and whatever is left of the ashes, some people seem to subscribe for. And I'm like, oh, there, there, there you go. <laughs> Here's my content. <laughs> Yeah, you've you've been going uh, all arch warhammer and. Uh... I may have gone <laughs> well, a little. Not quite. Bit... Not quite. Uh, <laughs> well, you may own sort of twist, and I may, I may have gone a little bit ranty in a video. I may have also misquoted that orcs come on twenty eight millimeter bases. I would like to apologise now. They do not. <laughs> they come on twenty five millimeter bases. The internet will never forgive me. I am aware. Isn't it great? We're, we're sort of like politicians right now. You, you know, I, I withdraw my statement. I apologise. You know, orcs do not come on 28 millimeter bases. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have sexual relations with that woman. You know. <laughs> oh, so I'm Bill Clinton now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're the Bill Clinton of the YouTube Facebook community. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, I'm going to let you lead on this one because I know it's a subject close to your heart. So or the bases or, or the basing. Or, orc base sizes. Take orc it away. Base <laughs> sizes. Well, we don't quite know yet. This is the problem. It's all still up in the air. But if a few of the images that was, we've been shown are showing orcs on 32 millimeter bases, like standard orc boys. Now, as different people deal and don't deal with their own armies, um, I put my knobs on 22 millimeter bases because I find they fill them out. But that's purely for my own personal aesthetic choices. I think knobs, but especially if they're exactly in... the same. Yeah, because they fill them out. Like you'd expect a bigger model fits on a bigger base, and it's sort of that transition between what is it? The characters I think are on. Don't quote me now. <laughs> I think they're uh, on like 40 mil bases or something like that. As he. Yeah, I believe you're right. Yeah, like Terminator size bases. Yeah, about that. So Terminator so is basis. So it's a nice transition visually from the twenty five mil to the twenty two for the knob and then forties are generally for the characters. So it's sort of you know what I mean? It that's sort of hierarchy. That's the way I like looking at it. But quite a lot of people seem to like putting their orc boys on twenty two mil bases and fair play to them. You know what I mean? some folk aren't quite happy that the feet sort of poke off a little bit. I actually kind of like that, as if you get a lot of them together, they sort of look like a, a horde as they're, they're more closely knit. But that's that's the thing I'm trying to get at is it's up to people themselves individually as a choice as to which base they want to use. So if you want to use 22 millimeter bases on your orcs, that's grand. If I'm, I'm just going to use the 25s that they come on, not only visually, but because tactically it affects the orc horde as well. Because of the spacing that we need. So you're going to need someone in combat. And you need to be within an inch of somebody in combat. And you can do that with Orc Boys on the 25 minute bases. You'll have a guy up at the front. And then you can get up to two guys if you really pack them in. Like really pack them in. You can get uh, up to two guys behind him fighting. But here's if you're on a 22 millimeter base. That doesn't happen. Because obviously the bases are bigger. You know what I mean? Well, you could also get better area than nine. So there's pros and cons, but I'm mostly focusing on the cons because Ford Army on bigger bases in my eyes seems a bit of uh, a counterproductive. But like I said, if people want to do that themselves, that's okay. The worry that I'm starting to see is that if Games Workshop start just showing orcs on 32 millimeter bases and start releasing box sets with only 32 millimeter bases, is that folk down the line and I, like i originally when i put my video out i was worried that it'd be like a few years from now it's already started where people are, have posted up on my videos talking about i wanted to my, you know i wanted to go into a local tournament but the 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 owner said i'd have to change all of my bases up to 32s that's the thing that uh, you know i would fear would be that people are being strong armed into changing the bases on their miniatures on a horde army now, I don't know about you, mate, but I've about 400 plus orcs that are already built. There, there are ways around this. People, there's like rings you can buy, you know, adapter rings, and you can put them on. But to be honest with you, I, I could not be bothered. 
may, maybe a few units here and there. Like we saw, the we thing, saw with the, the Borners with kill team. And the, maybe, the thing I, is yeah. with those. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. But the thing is with those adapter rings. They're not made by GW, are they? No, Games Workshop. So, don't, if don't you were so. to put adapter rings on your boys' bases to make them into 32 mil bases, so that you could play in a tournament in Warhammer World or in a Games Workshop store or whatever, I, I see and they did this. make it the rules <laughs> that you had to have them on the right size bases, but they also have the rule that you cannot have an army with any models or parts or bits made by any other company. Now, I'm sure that would include the bases. They're pretty strict on that. Um, and we're, we're, we're sort of assuming a lot here that this is going to be the case. Where's but, my team for her? Where's my team for her? Yeah. <laughs> they might say, I'm sorry, you can't use them like that because they're not our bases. You've you know, you've used third party products on there to do that. And like I say, I am jumping ahead there because we are assuming that and Games Workshop have already stated that you can use whatever bases you like. It's completely up to you. Obviously, whatever base guess, they can with. Yeah, you're correct. Within, that is what Games Workshop stats reason. is at the moment, yeah. And and that's brilliant. But I think what I and I share your concern that the worry is that at some point in the future it becomes a legal requirement to compete in tournaments and things that you do have to have them on these base sizes. That's the worry. And for me, it's not even a thing in, I know you've touched on the sort of the in-game the in implications and you know how it can effectively nerf your boys in, in one aspect and buff them in another. That's not even the real concern for me. For me, I just like the way they look as they are. It's personal taste. I, it works for me. Um, and I don't want to feel that I'm sort of forced to to change that. Now, I've never played in sort of big tournaments at big things and everything. And I'm sure that most players out there don't. Most of us just play in local clubs, in stores, in our houses, at friends' houses and whatever. That's I think the majority of war gamers do that. Um, it's only a minority that are heavily into the sort of the tournament scene, as it were. But, um, I, yeah, it's... It's a funny one. If if they release them and they come with 32 mil bases and they always stick to the um, the rules of look, you can have them on whatever bases you like. It, it really doesn't matter. But I think that that in itself can cause some contention because people will bring up about how players are gaining unfair advantages one way or the other, and so that can in itself cause a bit of a problem. Um, and then we've got, like you say, the other aspect of it being a horde army. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you and everyone listening to this who has an orc army has the same struggles I do. Now, I play, when I'm playing my games of 40k against Reroll Joe, we play on a 6x4 table. And most games, I struggle to squeeze my army into my deployment zone at the beginning of the game as it is. If my hundred odd boys are now on much bigger bases taking up a much larger footprint that's going to be hard if not impossible to actually fit my army in within my deployment zone at the beginning of the game and uh yeah that's 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 a concern of mine as well well this is it like it's just it touches a little bit on the video we did previously where we were talking about um how some individuals tend to be a lot more vocal and sort of tire a group so you're you're getting that sort of mentality where some guys are already uh, adopting the whole oh they should be on 22 millimeter bases everything that's toughness four is on a 22 millimeter base and it's like well no mate gene stealers uh toughness four they're still on 25s you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind yeah. if it was standardized. If Even if there was that type of logic. It, it, you know, I think that's the problem is it needs to be part of the base rule set because basing is, is so important in the game now. It should be standardized and it should be something like that. Even if it was based on toughness, you know, toughness three creatures are on 25 mils, toughness four creatures are on 32 mils. Well, it would be detrimental to us. At least it would be standardized and consistent instead of this sort of 
limbo land we're in now where anyone can you know change the base size if they want and at the end of the day they're your miniatures but in the likes of tournaments you can't really have that sort of that grayness yeah. you know what i mean Although, me mind you me, me and you both did it ourselves because obviously knobs um at the time were on 25 mil bases just like the boys and both myself and yourself we decided from just an aesthetic viewpoint that oh we're going to put them onto the 30 mil bases because or 32 mil bases because they do like the way they look better and to be honest at detriment because it sort of uh when you've got one knob within your squad or a squad of knobs on those size bases we were kind of taking on those those negatives that we're worried about with the boys so it's yeah i don't know it's, it's a weird one and my my worry about it on the larger scale as well is that we've seen it happen with space marines space marines were the first ones to jump to the 32 mil bases and um it's i think it's because and my slight concern is that 40k as a game may be veering slightly away from the mass battles and we may start seeing in the future sort of smaller armies because everything is getting bigger in model size but that's obviously going to have an impact on how many models you can fit on the tabletop you go back years ago and you look at like the size of dreadnoughts and the size of tanks and the size of demon princes and carnifexes that everything's got bigger Space Marines have jumped up to Primaris now. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Orcs being made bigger. It, it, it probably is going to happen, if not during this month of October, at some point in the future. Everything's getting bigger. And I think that's going to have a detrimental effect, effect to Horde armies. And I think you may see the sort of... And I, and I know I'm jumping ahead and I'm probably maybe reading too much into them just changing the base size of, of a particular model or something. But I think it seems to be the way it's going. We've seen their, their focus on games like Kill Team and stuff and liking these skirmish games, which is amazing, by the way. I love Kill Team. Um, and people's money and stuff is short and they're trying to make it a bit more of an easy to access hobby and stuff and maybe in some way that's going to be some way to do that we get sort of less bang for our buck almost with kits now you remember when you used to buy boxes of boys years in the past you used to get far more in the box 16 and, uh, or something, wasn't it? yeah and same with imperial guard and stuff you used to get like you know 20 odd now you get like 10 or 12 or something so yeah I, I, yeah i don't know I, I think we may see uh the game of 40k itself get a little bit smaller scale and maybe there is some big changes rules wise with orc boys and stuff we've, we've seen it mentioned ourselves as well haven't we the, you know some people on forums and things and facebook groups saying that boys are overpowered uh <laughs> not 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 a statement i agree with personally oh, um but uh, that's a whole nother topic in itself really isn't it but it's uh I don't know. Maybe they're going to go on the bigger bases. Maybe they are going to adapt the rules. Maybe they are going to change them slightly. I, I don't know. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's just, I think it's a sort of uncertainty. And like you say, because they haven't got a set, they haven't really got a set rule that everyone can follow. But I don't know whether I want that or not. I don't know whether I agree with that. I don't know whether I... I like the fact that currently, as it stands, we can have all bases. I think it's just the worry of, at some point in the future, them saying, right, from now on, all these have to be on 32. If they're not, you can't play. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's the worry. Yeah. So it might be, like we might be, we might be worrying about nothing. But <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, because, like I said, I've already seen posts up on some of the videos I put up where people, guys have been saying that. It's like, I have my stuff on 25 mils. Um, the local store manager, from what I gathered, it wasn't a games workshop. So the local store manager and local players are like, "No, you're you're sort of modeling for advantage. You need to upgrade them to thirty tiers if you want to play." But just to touch on a few points that you you made there, I think what we're seeing is scale creep, because you're looking at Primaris Marines now. Scale creep has been in the game for a long time. Those of you who don't know what scale creep is, it's a, a, as well, we've gone through the game. If you look back in Rogue Trader era orcs and stuff like that, if you look back at proper 
um, old school lead miniatures, like even space orcs. They, they're actually twenty eight mil. They're small. They're they're only slightly bigger than Gretchen. They're hunched over and they fit on the twenty five mil bases. But as the game has gotten older, older and over the times, you can see if you look into like a, an older player's collection, you'll see that the the miniatures have progressively gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. The scale creep. That's what scale creep is. Slowly over time, the game is getting the miniatures are getting bigger and bigger. Hence, the base size is getting bigger to accommodate the bigger miniatures. So maybe it touches on that. Maybe orcs will get bigger again it's themselves. But it, it all depends. In regards to the armies, I think Games Workshop always want us to buy big armies. Bigger armies equals more money spent. So hard armies to them. Well, they may not be getting as much out of us for orc boys as a space marine horde, horde army, which would be made up of like tactical marines or whatever. It's, it's still, it's a lot of commitment. Like, you know what I mean? I think that's that's a thing that sort of oh, puts yeah. people off. Yeah, it's like, it, I think that puts a lot of newer players off. And I, I have to fight against the grey tide myself. Is It's a bit of an uphill battle. You know what I mean? You need to get all that detail painted on the orcs and they're, they're covered in detail and then trying to get like trying to sit down and paint the mob of two of the orc boys is oh my god man <laughs> and then get it, and then get it, once you've finally done that and you've achieved that lofty goal then one day being told hey you need to you know all them 200 300 400 boys you painstakingly painted over many many years and money and sweat and tears you don't mind just rebasing them all, do you? <laughs> <laughs> people just snapping and losing the plot. And then, and then, and then, people on the forums and the communities and stuff saying, ah, oh, you're just being salty, stop whinging, stop whining, you know, just because you spend money doesn't give you any rights, you know. You know yeah, they tell you to rebase them, you got to rebase them. Just suck suppose, it up, buttercup. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Well, it just depends, Mike. It, it only really applies to people who are going to be playing in Games Workshop stores. And, and tournaments you now people playing in games workshop stores yeah that'll probably affect a fair few people but like let's be realistic what percentage of the gaming community or the community that actually actively play the game play in tournaments i'd say probably around 10 percent, maybe less i would say and, and I'd, yet, I'd say that the vast majority just play with their friends for fun you know what i mean but and yet for such a small minority they sort of dictate the tournament scene is dictating, even if you look at the FAQs, it's dictating how the game is developed. So the mentality of tournaments dictates how players will interact, even in their day-to-day -day sort of basic standard yeah, games. Yeah, you, you're 100% you're right there. And it does feel, and I've played in um, sort of local club tournaments um, years ago and had great fun. But... Um, and I've never, I've never been to Warhammer World. It's something I will address in the future for sure. Um, and I, but I've always, I've always envisioned that I will at some point. I, so even though I never have, I, and I think a lot of players are like me on that front. Most of the time, they will just play in local clubs or with their friends and that. But I think they've always got this in the back of their mind that one day they will take that, you know, beloved army of theirs and take it into the tournament and see how they can fare. And so I think even the players that never do it, a lot of them intend to at some point in the future. And that's probably why the sort of uh, the, the strict rules and things come into play. Even with me, like, um, there's a lot of third party, you know, orc parts and orc alternatives and stuff. And even those, there's some amazing stuff out there. But even on them, I've sort of thought, eh, they look really cool. But if I had them, I wouldn't be able to play them if I took my army to a tournament or something and it does those those sort of things do weigh up on your mind when you're making those purchases and stuff so i think you know in terms of the rules and how the games play because we can all play house rules and stuff at home and you know we can play on dinner plate bases if we want um <laughs> but uh, <laughs> give it time opponent. <laughs> give yeah. it time we'll be there eventually mate <laughs> um but yeah so i think uh that's probably the reason the tournament sort of scene drives it and obviously the tournament scene is where they do a lot of their play testing and see the balance of the game because people are really sort of uh, playing the game and you know exploiting every tiny little bits of rules and stuff so that is the perfect sort of uh, arena for them to 
field test and play test certain things and see if things are being exploited and do fixes and stuff and change rules and things so i think that's where the whole base um base gate sort of saga will be Basically. eventually decided <laughs> at the uh, at the tournaments that's at the tournaments and things is where i think where decisions will be made about you know do we set a strict rule of certain things have to be on certain size bases or do we say that people can do it on whatever and just put up with all the bitching and moaning that a lot of these tournament players are going to have because there is probably going to be accusing fingers saying well you only won that game with your horde orc army because you had them all on 25 mil bases and that was gaining you an unfair advantage and so yeah i, I totally see your point where you're coming from on that and that is going to cause conflict and stuff in those it's already, it already is man it's this is the, yeah, the amazing yeah, thing of... hence, why, hence why we're talking about it <laughs> but, but yeah but it's, it's, it's crazy like it's just mad it's something so simple as just like what size bases you use on your orc boys becomes such a dividing point amongst people <laughs> such a dividing point it's it does and it goes back to my point i made earlier about the the internet the internet facebook um you know it's just turning into meme wars that's all it is it's just meme yeah, wars yeah meme wars and sort of uh you know a, a healthy debate turns into a slagging match and stuff and yeah it's uh i don't know we do find a lot of people becoming those those typical basement dwelling nerd trolls that love to just hurl abuse at each other because they're arguing over what size they're <laughs> plastic soldier should be put on and it's uh it's quite ridiculous i think we both come from the standpoint is in look base your models on whatever base you like you now whether that be 32s whether it be 25s within reason obviously don't come out with 30 boys all on dreadnought bases because <laughs> that, that, that that won't sit well but um yeah I mean, hey if you want to take this base thing even further what about vehicles on bases that's yeah well that's what they're doing with a lot of the new vehicles i was going to say we can't talk yeah. anymore because the the gw gestapo is kicking down my door to make me rebase my walks but, <laughs> but i think that was just my team file hat slipping <laughs> yeah because I mean, that's that, that's another one of the, obviously all these new buggies they're showing um for the orcs the rocker truck and the um whatever trademark rubbish you asked you asked me earlier what my favorite vehicle is i don't know which one was my favorite vehicle my favorite name definitely has got to be the boom daka snaz wagon i love that that is that is incredible name i, I just um i don't see orcs saying that they'd just be like snaz wagon you know what i mean oh, a would... bad moon would a bad moon would say that <laughs> like you, you, you look at some of their days, what was it, Gashrak, Gashrak de Flash, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, there's some, uh, Gaz, um, what's Gaz Skull's full name? Um, Mag Gaz, or Gaz Skull Mag Orig Thracker. There you go. And it wasn't that, I mean, we're going off topic here a little bit, but wasn't that originally a bit of a play on Margaret Thatcher? No, from, no, that is absolute is that, is, bollocks. Is yes. it absolute bollocks? That, that is absolute bollocks. <laughs> A discussion for another Kill time. Kill it with maybe. fire. Kill that bollocks with fire. <laughs> the timelines fit. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Bold. No. <laughs> oh, well, uh, they'll have to say that one for another time. But yeah, going back to the, the, the all vehicles on the basis. So they've released the pictures of these, and obviously they're all on bases, which is something we've not seen before. Obviously, we've seen it with walkers, you know, dreadnoughts and sentinels and the like. Um, but yeah, all these all vehicles are shown on bases, and um, we don't know currently whether that is just because that's um, to fit the game mechanics of Speed Freaks, or whether those bases are intended for use in 40k. And um, yeah, that's that's divided people as well. A lot of people are saying, "What's all this? You know, vehicles on bases? That's just wrong." Um, and I don't really know where I sit on that because when I look at them on the base, I think. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I kind of. I think they kind of look quite cool, and it gives you some great modelling opportunities and stuff. You can have your buggies, you know, popping wheelies and going up on two wheels, and sort of, you know, you can add to the sort of uh, the artistic flair and stuff on your bases. You know, having driving over bits, and 
it's uh, it opens up all sorts of cool converting and modeling opportunities and i don't know i'm kind of thinking i wonder what my truck would look like on a base you know uh, it's uh where do you stand on it? What do you think of the whole uh, bases on vehicles? Yeah, I think the bases help in that they standardize the amount of space that the vehicle will take up and where you're measuring to a measuring point. So that will give you ultimate freedom in regards to the conversions for the vehicle if it has a standard base because yeah. you have a, 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 a reference point then. You're like, okay, well, the vehicle can't be any bigger than its base. You know what I mean? And height-wise, that's at your own discretion, I suppose. You know what I mean? But whereas previously, it's like, well, I've got this step roll out the front, but actually you're to measure to the hole. And you know what I mean? Where where you have a solid point of reference in regards to measuring. And this is why it just harks back to the, to the argument about basing, because it's so important. Like, it's such an important part of the game, the base that a miniature is on. It, in regards to reference for measuring and shooting and, and everything, and even when something explodes, you know what I mean? It's such a... But yeah, because obviously vehicles at the moment, you measure from like any part of the vehicle, don't you? So the, the, sort of the size of the vehicles is obviously quite important for like, you know, it is over 50% of your vehicle behind cover. Um, yeah, you know, Ev it everything. It, everything. It, it, it affects all aspects. But yeah you, yeah, you make a good point there about the, like you say, standardizing it and when you're making your conversions and stuff, you know, people can obviously convert all sorts and say, that, oh, this is this is a truck and it can be three times the size or it could be half the size. So yeah, having it sort of standardized on a base and stuff. But I think um, I think these are going to be completely optional, I think. Um, and I think the rules for vehicles, obviously, I think the, the base for these vehicles, if you do decide to base them for your 40K army and not just Speed Freaks, that will... Um, I don't think that will be used in game terms. It will just be an aesthetic thing. I think you'll still be measuring all your distances, etc., and stuff from the vehicle itself. I don't know. I don't see them. Sort of, it's a bit of a weird know. one. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like that basing limbo in regards to boys as well, because we're seeing them on 25s and we're seeing them on 22s. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It's a bit strange to be shown the vehicles all on bases and then it will be sort of optional because it's that sort of... You know, if someone shows up to a tournament and it doesn't have a base or it does have a base, it leads to that sort of that same argument again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, like I say, these these could just be bases because um, for Speed Freaks, they have to be on bases. Um, it could be that. Obviously, years ago, did we, a lot of the time years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but did bikes used to come on bases or did they not? Um, have they before, always been on bases? Going I remember back them. to the older ones, so the bikes before. Um, the bikes I remember we used to get them on before. square bases, like the the sort of rectangular bases before they had the sort of a, the rounded ones. But uh, so the ones in Gork and Morka didn't come on bases. You know the the old skill ones where the guns were really yeah. far out because you used to have like well, a lane go. of fire. Yeah, they they didn't used to come on bases, and then it it got switched up and. Uh, release was done of our current bikes and they came on weird bases you know the ones that look like a square base that's rounded off at each end and then in yeah. the new pictures we're seeing we're seeing them on the sort of i don't even know the dimensions of them those sort of oval, oval. bases yeah. oval bases yeah we're seeing them on that is, is that what they're being repackaged with was that just the aesthetic choice of the guy who owned the miniatures or Whoever in the studio, you know what I mean? This is, I haven't got a clue, man. I literally, no, if I we, build... we, we, we just, the truth is, we just don't know at the moment, do we? I mean, yeah. there might just be, you know, there might be four speed freaks, you know, bases might play an important part in that game, um, and they may need to be on that. And I mean, you, it, they may just be there for aesthetics, in which case you could you, um, magnetize them or something so you can have them on the bases, you can take them off the bases. That's probably going to be the best option. That sounds um, like too much effort. Yeah, true. <laughs> and if you decide not to use the bases, then how you got a few? Um, I mean, those bases are going to be very handy for us all players if we decide to convert some things to make uh, our own version of Gorkonauts or, you know, Mega Dreads or whatever. There you go. You've got the base, the correct base size, sitting right there, ready for you to mount it on. So, because that's that's what they look like to me. They look like sort of Gorkonaut size uh, bases to me. 
for the for the bikes. Well, they're the same sort of shape, but they're not way the, not the bikes. No, 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 not not the bikes. The, um, oh, like, that, the that'd be one big ass bike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the, the the new buggies, the the war trike and the um the the snaz wagon, etc. The I don't know. I think I think the the buggies are going to come on the smaller bases more. I think by looking at them, they might come on the same size ones as the likes of the Daka Jet or the Waz Bomb Blaster Jet or whatever mouthful it is. Um, because the Gorkana comes on the same size one as the Knight, I think. So it's it's pretty hefty. Yeah, it's a bit of a big boy already. But so <laughs> I mean, they've they've confirmed, haven't they, that the the rules for these things are going to be featured. All these vehicles are going to be usable, obviously, in Speed Freaks, but also usable in the Orc Codex. And I mean, they've already showed it with that that initial trailer that we saw ages ago with the 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 the, the, the first buggy um, replacing the old buggy. So it looks like. Um, what we were asking for years ago was a replacement of the buggy, but it looks like we, you know, we've got a complete replacement now. I mean, that thing's dead and gone. Come this new codex, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been, it hasn't just, it's not a new update. You know, we haven't got an updated version of the buggy now. That thing is being completely replaced with model and rules by the look of it. So, I guess we've lost the buggy, we've lost the scorcher, and we've lost the war track. And in their place, we've got these six new vehicles with vastly different weaponry and abilities and stuff. And uh, each one of them is so individual and comes equipped with stuff that is completely sort of new and, you know, all new weapon names and stuff we've got and new abilities and stuff. So it's, it's going to be really exciting and uh, cool to see how these fare on the table. And uh, I don't know, are they... Are they are they still going to fulfill the same role? Are they still going to be the fast attack sort of choice of the buggies? I think they will be. Um, but they're going to be very different in game terms, I think, to what the you know the buggy and the scorcher, etc., have been up to now. Well, even their role slightly changed when they, they allowed them to outflank and stuff like that. So they, they actually got a lot, a lot better. But yeah, it'll be interesting rules-wise because we've we've seen a few... Uh, leaks rules was lately as well haven't we in regards to warlord yes yeah thank god for that i mean um uh the, the our our man kirioff uh youtuber has um been blessing us with all these leaks i mean he was uh the, i think the first channel originally to leak a lot of the names of these buggies and things um and the same source has since um been leaking warlord traits and uh yeah, they, they are very exciting. Um, I've covered them on my channel, and um, I was incredibly pleased when I read the um, Bad Moons one, because after reading the Bad Moons clan trait, I was like, eh, it's re rolling ones for shooting phase, it's good. Um, and and six is probably one of the... Yeah, yeah, that, well, that's, yeah, yeah, with that, it combines beautifully. But um, in, in terms of the sort of clan traits, I felt it was one of the weaker ones of, you know, some of the other ones I felt were a bit better in sort of competitive terms. But, um, yeah, the, the, the four plus invulnerable save for a bad moon war boss is, uh, if, if, it, if it's true, it pleases me greatly. And I will definitely be choosing that one for my war boss, I think. But, uh, yeah, we've since then we've had the um, generic ones. Um, remind me, what 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 was the uh, clan specific trait for blood axes? I don't know. I thought it was to move the three units after the deployment, but I, I could be wrong. That was the one I no, looked at, and I was like, that's, "Ooh, that's swank." Yeah, that's the generic one that that fits blood axes perfectly. Um, but I think the blood axe one, this one that only blood oh, axes the cover save, have, was it? The... You get plus one. To no, cover that's save, the clan that... trait. The warlord trait, I believe, <laughs> was you get command points back on a six plus. And they did not nerf that in the FAQ though. And blood axes could fall back and charge or something or shoot or something. They could fall back and shoot or something like that, but uh, within a certain range of. Them. But yeah, getting the. Yeah, the the what the CPs. Um, yeah, because yeah, they, they were doing. They, um, they sort of nerfed the Im Imperial Soup uh, CP you, farms, but they sort of didn't. But you could only get them. You can from now on. You can only get each turn if you win back a CP. I think you can only use if say you've got multiple characters within your army that have the ability to gain back a CP. 
what they've done now is said that, that you can only use one of those abilities. If you've got multiple characters with similar abilities, you can only use one of those abilities per turn. So you can't farm command points, you know, because obviously people could exploit that. If they, if they could have access to several different characters that could do that, I mean, they could just keep end up farming command points and getting them back and never spending a command point. So, yeah, it's, it's only a slight nerf. I think, and I don't think it'll have that much effect on most players. Um, it's, I think it's only going to really affect people that were really exploiting that and sort of being able to gain command points back sort of three or four times in a turn. The, the FAQ didn't quite go the way that it probably should have, in that it it, it affects more pure sort of the time. So like if you, we were just playing Orcs, you know what I mean? It, it would affect us a bit more than... Others who were building soup lists, as they called them, with smash captains, they'd bring along Imperial Guards as CP batteries, basically. I think a lot of players were calling that um, it, it should have been something along the lines of command points could, would only be spent on the detachment that they come from. You know what I mean? I think that was the type of ruling that a lot of folk were looking for to prevent yeah, these I can, exploits. I can definitely see the sense in that. That's, that's logical. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. You're thinking about it, even from a tactical point of view, you're not exactly going to be getting your Imperial Guard sergeant to be ordering your Primaris Marines around now, are you? You know what I mean? It's it's the other way around, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bloody right. <laughs> or any of those blood axes trying to order around some bad moons. Yeah, no, we won't have any of that. No, no, that's okay, mate. You charge headlong into them shooting your guns. We'll just <laughs> sneak around here. And... <laughs> Yeah, so I think we've we've covered the bad moon versus blood axe debate quite well. Anyway, that brings me on. How is the painting of uh, the bad moon getting on? I haven't painted him. I have started <laughs> constructing him, though. I have started him, but it's uh, super secret good. squirrel. I'm not even showing you, mate. It's that Excellent. super secret squirrel. Oh, well, that's that's good to know. We, we just wanted to I just wanted to make sure and let all our subscribers and listeners know that you were a man of your word. You lost the bet fair and square. It was it was voted bad moons the best clan you know so you 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 you, you, you took it you took it like a man took more like a chin. grot but you, you, <laughs> <laughs> and you're painting up a bad moon now so yeah excellent I, I look forward i look forward to seeing him and uh good luck to you on your joys of painting yellow i think i have yellow around here somewhere <laughs> Paint yellow belly grots or something. I'm not too sure. I must have. <laughs> oh, careful, careful. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll set I'll set Gus Gob on you. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, I think um, we've pretty much covered everything we wanted to in this podcast, haven't we? Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we haven't. You know, a lot of it was taken up by basing. I apologize. I didn't mean to go that in depth <laughs> and hark that much on about it, but it is sort of a bone of contention with some people and avoiding points, a sort of fault line along the community. It's it's just interesting. Well, I, think it's, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a topic that a lot of our listeners will have a view on one way or another and a bit of an interest in um, it because uh, if, if the forums and things are anything to go by, people are talking about it. So, um, yeah, I think it's... Uh, something of interest to them and uh it's been a bit of a slow news week uh yet again in october um but uh i believe episode six of two bald knobs hopefully we shall have a lot more information for you and hopefully we'll be waxing lyrical about the all the orc codex goodness that is sitting in our hands as we record the episode uh we can only hope but uh yeah, if you guys do not want to miss an episode of Two Bald Knobs, then it is very important that you are subscribed to both of us um, because this episode is, uh, as you're already aware, is on Skarner's channel. The next episode will be on my channel, and that's how we do it each time. We alternate. So uh, please, please make sure you are subscribed to both of us and hit those bell icons so you don't miss an episode. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think we, we talked about what we needed to talk about. I have a subscriber giveaway going on at the moment. Um, so do I. Oh, lo and behold, it's almost <laughs> like it's a month of orky goodness. <laughs> <laughs> at least we're celebrating October. <laughs> that's true. So yeah, man. what are you giving away on your channel? I have a pain boy new in his packaging to be given away. 
I have a pain boy to give away. What are you giving away? Awesome. Pain boys are incredibly useful. You need pain boys in your army. You've got to patch them boys up and keep them fighting. Um, on my channel, I have an orc piece of scenery to give away. A orc barracks from Tabletop Scenics. Um, it's an MDF kit, laser cut MDF. Uh, awesome, awesome looking kit. It's sitting here right now teasing me because I've been wanting one for ages. Um, Tabletop Scenics were good enough to send me one to give away to the subscribers, which was really cool of them. Um, but it's such a tease because it's now in my hands and I can't open it because it's for whoever wins the competition. But yeah, guys, so we've both got these giveaways going. So look through both our channels to find the videos um, where all you need to do is like and uh, comment and be a subscriber to stand a chance at winning one of, if not both of those prizes. You know, someone could win your pain boy and my old barracks. You never know. Well, if you're not in, you can't win. So, yeah, like you said, go to the videos, be subscribed, and follow the conditions of each individual competition as such. I'll be doing a random.org draw at the end of the month uh, for my one. Um, so, yeah. I, I will be doing the same, and I've never used that facility before, but because my subscribership's gone up so much and the sheer amount of comments, I will definitely have to do that because I'm not writing all those names on little bits of paper and putting them in a hat. <laughs> I'll be there all day, <laughs> which was the old way of doing things. Um, yeah. and I'm going to miss that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to use what everyone seems to be using is the random.org and uh, just randomize it. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll send out the pain boy and we'll send out the barrack to whoever wins, wherever they are in the world, free of charge, and uh, help them celebrate October with a lovely little orky prize. Exactly, and hopefully by then we'll all have codexes in our hands. So, from Scarner, that's me signing out. And this is 6 plus Stevo signing out. I stole, I stole your catchphrase, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you totally did. <laughs> Even Batman.